everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about something that lives in the water and swims and has scales and fins. Can you guess what we're talking about? Did you say fish? If you said fish, you're right. We're talking about fish. Our song is an old song that maybe you've heard before, but maybe not. I'm going to sing it one time, and then I'm going to have you join me in the second time. And we're going to use our fingers. We're going to count on our fingers. One, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So get ready. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so. Which finger did it bite? This little finger on the right. Ready? Let's do it together. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger so. Which finger did it bite? This little finger on the right. Have you ever been fishing? Have you ever been bitten by a fish? I haven't. I have been fishing though. Now our story for today is one that you may have read before and it's The Pout Pout Fish by Deborah Deason with pictures by Dan Hanna. And one reason that I really like this book is that it is full of rhyming words and rhythmic text and playing with rhymes and rhythms is a really great pre-reading skill. How do you think this fish is feeling? Do they look like he's feeling happy? Nah, he looks like he's feeling pretty glum. Look at that frown. The pout pout fish. Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum gloomy swimmer with an ever present pout. Can you try making a pout? I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Do you ever feel like that? I feel like that sometimes. Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend, nice thought, Miss Clam. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Can you do that with me? Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree. I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Can you do the blubs with me? Let's go. Blub, blub, blub. Along comes a squid, quite a slender squiggly sight. She is squirmy, she is squelchy, she is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope, how about a smile, a little joy, a little hope? Says the fish to his friend, Mrs. Squid, I would try, but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Ready for the blubs? Blub, blub, blub. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms, covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hulky bulky sulking is an unattractive trait. Says the fish to his friend, Mr. Ape, my chum, with a mouth like mine, I am destined to be glum. 
I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Ready for the blubs? Here we go. Blub, blub, blub. Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, what do you think this fish is going to do? She plants a kiss upon his pout, and then she swims away. Can you send a kiss to the pout pout fish? Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just aghast. He is stone-faced like a statue. Then he blinks and speaks at last. My friends, says Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss-kiss fish with a kiss-kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch Smooch, smooch, smooch. And here we have some of our friends from before in the story. Do you remember? Octopus, squid, jellyfish, and clam. Smooch! The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now it's time to pass it over to Mr. Michael at the Nature Center to tell you more about fish. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Hello everyone. Welcome to Discovery Club. This week we're going to be discussing fish. And Miss Angela at the Fort Worth Public Library has really given us a great start with a great story time. So thank you Miss Angela for that time that you've uh, spent with our, with our group here with Discovery Club. So today, as I said, we're going to be talking about fish. Now, are there any of you out there who like to go fishing? Either like going fish with the game, playing the game Go Fish, right? Or going out with someone and going fishing and catching fish. So either way, you might like that. You might like the game or go fishing. So if you've gone fishing before and you've caught something, if you're lucky enough to catch something, uh, this, is a, this will be a great lesson for you to uh, learn more about those fish. And if you like playing the card game, well, you're still going to learn something too. So what is a fish? Now... We've talked about different groups of animals and the one big group that we've talked about that a lot of the animals that we've discussed in Discovery Club fit in are vertebrates. Can you say vertebrates? Oh, great job. Now, you and I, we're vertebrates as well. Now, there are five vertebrate groups, okay? Fish being one of them. So we're going to talk about fish today. We've talked about mammals, okay? We've talked about birds, amphibians. And reptiles those are the five vertebrate groups and basically a vertebrate is an animal with a backbone now I have a skeleton of a fish I want to show you now I did not hurt or harm this fish uh, this was brought to us and this is the skeleton of a fish now uh, fish they have a backbone uh, along the back there they have a backbone and that's what classifies them or considers them to being a vertebrate so they have a backbone and you can reach that back there and you feel uh, feel a bone as well all that goes all the way down that's your backbone you're a vertebrate so fish are part of the vertebrate group now where do fish live no they don't live up there oh over there over there in water right exactly fish live in water uh, this right here is the west fork of the trinity river and you probably wouldn't believe me, but I hope you do. About, about five minutes ago, as I was getting all set up for this program, this, I think it was a largemouth bass, this bass jumped out of the water. It was so cool. So now I have it positioned. So I have it ready here for that bass to jump out of the water for us. But they live in the water. They live in our, our ponds, our lakes, our rivers, our streams, all around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. You come out to the nature center, you can see fish jumping out of the water or if you go fishing now just a, a friendly reminder if you want to come fish at the fort worth nature center and refuge you can't just sit right here on the on the ground 
on the land in a parking lot with a fishing pole and go fishing. You can't do that. You actually have to be in the water in the form of a canoe, a kayak, or just a little small boat of some sort. And we get lots of individuals that come out here and they fish out here. So uh, fish live in the water. Now, there are different types of fish. Now, the fish that we have here in the Fort Worth area are what we consider freshwater fish. That means the water is fresh, as opposed to if you go down to Galveston or Padre Island or just along the Texas coast, you get saltwater fish. So we don't have those here. We have freshwater fish. So those are the ones that you're going to find out here. So we talked about what it is. It's a member of the vertebrate group because it has a backbone. There's a jet flying over, so I'm going to talk a little bit louder so you can hear me. And then we also talked about where they live. And this is a great example of it. And I just saw a fish jumping out of the water. All right. So that's what a fish is. Now. Being a fish, it's a really difficult life. You know, how do you survive living in the water? Well, there's a couple of things that you have to take in consideration when you are a fish. Number one, how do you breathe? Now, you and me, we're outside and we can breathe the oxygen, we can breathe the air, because we have organs in our body called lungs. And our lungs are right here in our chest, and we allow that what allows us to breathe. Well, for a fish, they use a different part of their body they use what we call gills. Can you say gills? Great. The gills are on the side of their face. In fact, I have a picture of a fish I want to show you. And it's mainly to talk about the, uh, the something else I'm going to get ahead of myself. Uh, but the gills are like right there, right here between uh, the eye and this little uh, fin right here. So they're, all, they're like slits, little openings. And what happens as the water... Um, is moving along those gills they can actually pull that oxygen because water is made of hydrogen and oxygen all right and they can pull that oxygen out and it goes into their bloodstream and then that allows them to breathe and to be able to survive so if you're a fish you got to be able you got to have gills to allow you to breathe underwater and that's why they can stay underwater and when you fish and you pull them out of water you're like you can't leave them out of water too long uh, you want to put them back in water especially if you're doing catch and release you want to release the fish back in the water so they use gills to help them to breathe. Now, another important thing about living underwater for a fish, how does it stay balanced? How does it move around? Well, it has fins, okay? And they have several different types of fins. I just showed you the picture, but let's talk about some of the fins they have, okay? So they have fins on the top and they also have fins on the bottom and on the sides. And those fins are all, they're important to help them keep its balance in the water. Okay, so those top fins and the bottom fins help keep their balance in the water as well as their side fins as well. They also have uh, fins that help them to swim, to actually motor through the water. So let's talk about, first of all, those fins that keep them balanced. You have a fin up here at the very top, that's called a dorsal fin. And then you have fins at the bottom called pelvic fins. Okay, so you have dorsal fins and pelvic fins. Again, keeps it nice and balanced. Also, they have this fin right here called a pectoral fin that they have one on each side so they have fins on the side fins on the top and they can maneuver those fins again to give them that balance and then how do they move forward well they use this tail fin or also called a caudal fin okay this fin right here is called a caudal fin and that gives them that movement okay so in order to survive underwater you have to have gills and you also have fins and they help you uh, move in and out and throughout the water okay so they have fins. Now, what's really interesting about fish, you can see a fish, if you catch a fish, study that fish, you can learn a lot about them. You see all those different types of fins. But one of the cool things about fish that you can learn from is, I'm gonna put that right there, about what they eat and how they eat. And it depends on where you find them. You can find them at the top of the uh, surface of the water, you can find them down in the bottom, or kind of in the middle. And if a fish lives at the top, the surface of the, of the water column, their mouth has to be uh, configured in such a way so it can find food, as well as a fish that lives on the bottom. So you can look at a fin's mouth and tell where does it live, top of the, the water column, you know, top of the lake or the river, the bottom, or in the middle. Okay, so I have this right here. I'm gonna show you this. So if you see this fish right here, Notice how his fin, or I'm sorry, his mouth is shooting, is pointed upward. So this fish right here has a mouth part, a mouth position called, it's referred to as a superior mouth or an upper mouth. And what happens is they live at the top, 
towards the top of the surface of the water because their mouth is facing upwards. So as they're swimming, they're grabbing all the little, um, say, water spiders, um, whirly gigs, all the bugs and insects that are on top of the water, as well as just underneath the, uh, the top of the water, just kind of swimming at the top. And they use that mouth upwards and they just grab stuff. All right. Then you have fish like this, like catfish. If you notice the mouth, it's going down. Okay. You see that? How it's going down? That's referred to an inferior mouth or bottom. Okay. And they're at the bottom. So every all the food they like to eat is at the surface. Okay. I'm sorry. At the ground level. So their mouth is, is pointing downward. So they can still see. So they can avoid predators and eat. And they can look around like that. Okay. So their mouth is pointed down. That's called inferior or, or a bottom. And then the other one was upper or superior, where they too can watch for predators and eat. They're like, mm, da, 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 looking and eat. All right. And then the, the next one, or the last of the three, is this one here. It's called a terminal mouth or final. Okay. That's just your, their mouth goes straight. So as you can imagine, they're kind of in the middle. And they're swimming in the middle uh, levels of the water, grabbing all the food that they need. So it's really cool when the next time you catch a fish, look at its mouth. See if it's kind of facing straight, if it's going up, or if it's going down. And that will tell you where, uh, what level of the lake or the river or stream and so forth that it lives. Top, middle, or bottom. Isn't that fascinating that we can learn just by looking at them? Alright, I'm going to put that up as well. I have a couple of skeletons I want to show you or skulls of some fish. I've already showed you one. Um, this right here is a catfish. Okay, you can see right here. Let me tilt it. Those are where those little bar barbels right there, you know, where we call the, you know, the whiskers, if you will, of a cat. Uh, go there. Their nose is right here. Okay. And there's their mouth. I'm going to try to get close. If you look at their mouth, you see all these little ridges there? They're, it's really rough, so it allows them to grip onto its food and so forth. And these guys are going to be more close towards the bottom of the river or pond and so forth. Uh, so this is a catfish. Let me show you the underside of it. You can see there's this the jaw right there, that U shape. Okay. So that is a catfish. We have other really cool fish. Now there are a lot of common fish. We have uh, a lot of common fish out here like largemouth bass. We have, uh, we have crappie. We have sunfish. We have, um, what else do we have? We have carp. We also have uh, gar. Let me show you that. Look at this one. Whoa! Isn't that cool? So, here you see its eyes and have a long mouth. Okay? And look at those teeth. They're very, very sharp. Okay? So, we have gar that live uh, in our waters as well. And that's a pretty, pretty cool, looks like a you know, Pinocchio or Pinocchio or something. Uh, long nose, sharp teeth. And we get them out here. The, the main species I see out here are called spotted gar. They have all these little spots all over it. So, uh, the nature center is home to lots of different types of fish, a lot of freshwater fish that use their adaptations like their different types of fins to help them to swim as well as their gills to breathe uh, as they, you know, swim around in our waters. And why are they so important for us? Well, they're part of, and we've talked about this over and over, but I want you to remember because it's so important, part of the food web, okay? Fish play a major role and maintaining the health of a river. Did you not know that? They're important to keep this river safe, healthy, and so forth. And they do that through a, a network of consuming other animals and being consumed or eaten by other animals as well. So these fish here will eat small things, will eat small, uh, smaller fish, uh, they'll eat like little frogs and other things like that, that if they get too much in number, it could be um, hazardous or dangerous to the health of this river. Also, there are animals that eat the fish. So they provide, uh, they are a food source for other animals. Alligators we have out here. There goes a jet, give me one second. So the alligators out here, they like to eat the fish. Uh, smaller fish, like turtles will eat the smaller fish. So they get eaten and they eat as well. And that's very, very important. Uh, because you don't want to have too much of a certain species. So having fish, they eat different things and then they get eaten by things. 
so there's a nice healthy balance uh, imagine um, your mom and dad's car okay say you get in a car uh, there's probably room for your mom and dad up front and maybe uh, two kids in the back and then you get a third kid then you get a fourth kid a fifth kid you can't put that many it's against the law right but also there's just not enough room so these animals here fish play an important role to get rid of things that if they get too much it's it they won't fit and it'll it'll be dangerous for all the other animals and the the food sources so they'll got to get rid of all that so that's why fish play an important role they keep the health and the balance of our rivers uh in check so that's really important well that sums up our presentation today on fish we talked about what a fish is we talked about where they live talked about different types of fish such as the fresh water and the salt water uh fish and how we have fresh water uh, I did. I gave you a reminder. You can fish here at the nature center, but you cannot fish from the bank parking lot. You have to be in the water in a canoe or kayak or a small boat. We talked about that. We talked about those different adaptations, such as uh, fins, uh, gills, and then the placement and position of their mouth. How you can learn about where in the water, like they were at the top or the bottom or the middle. So we learned a lot of different things. We talked about the importance of fish as well. So I encourage you to go fishing. You know, tell your mom, your dad, your grandpa, your grandma friend get a fishing pole come out and uh get on the water and come fish here or uh, a lake near you or a river near you and grab that fish and learn about it and you can see it and then you, you can get it off your hook and let it go and let it swim and let someone else catch it and let someone else learn about it as well so uh i hope you learned a little bit about fish uh during this segment of discovery club uh and uh with that i'm gonna leave you and uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to be learning some more cool stuff about nature. So once again, as I always say, everything's connected. Everything you do with our, your environment and nature is going to affect all sorts of things. The animals and the people that live down the river. So uh, be smart. Don't pollute. And uh, learn more about nature and appreciate it more. And as I say always, discover nature uh, near you. So thank you very much for uh, viewing. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye, guys.